Well, treasures, you know, I haven't done a story in a long time and I was just feeling kind of down in the dumps. And of course, if you haven't noticed, I got my hair done today. It's the best it's gonna look because, you know, the hairdresser did it. Christopher gets all the credit. But sometimes just taking a shower, getting your hair done, doing something nice for yourself, maybe a bath bomb bath, and all of a sudden you're just in the mood for life again. And that's me today. I feel good. I love my hair. And so we found a couple stories we haven't read yet. Today, we're gonna read this fable, The Boy Who Held Back the Sea. Usually fables have a message in them. Maybe there's going to be some kind of a lesson in this book. Peter had just been sent to his room, and now there was a knock. He expected to see Papa. And maybe Papa's belt. But it was only Grandmother and the cat. I thought a story might cheer you up, she said, and settled into a chair with Wilhelmina on her lap. So they're not telling us that Peter got in trouble, but there's some clues, aren't they? They're called inferences. There's some clues because he's been sent to his room and he's afraid of his father's belt. What's the clue there when a dad gets out his belt? Back in the day, that used to mean somebody was going to get a whooping. When I was your age, grandmother began, a boy like you lived in this very town. His father was a brewer, just like your father. Jan wasn't really a bad boy, but you couldn't call him a good boy either. He was always off hunting or gazing over the dike out to sea when he should have been studying. Worse yet, he was always running back into town trying to arouse the guard because he thought he'd seen enemy soldiers or sea serpents. Whoops. One Sunday morning, Jan asked his mother if he might be excused from church. He had promised to go read to Mr. Schuler, a blind miller who lived five miles up the canal. His mother blessed her son's good heart. She sent him off with a splendid lunch and Mr. Schuler's favorite rhubarb pie. On the count of three, if you love rhubarb pie, say yay. One, two, three. Yay! yay! The boy's dog trotted along with him. I can barely read now, as all I want to do is go make a rhubarb pie. As soon as Jim, is that, did I miss a page? I'm in trouble. No. As soon as Jam was out of his mother's sight, he sat down under the king's statue and ate that pie himself. Uh-oh. He took out his sling and sent a piece of pie, a chunk of pie, into the statue's crown for the pigeons. A man saw him shoot a rock through the schoolhouse window, but it was only old Captain Blovelt. Whether or not the stories that he was a pirate were true, he was surely the last man to report a troublemaker. Jan put the sling in his pocket and went off in the woods to hunt squirrels. Sophie, have you been doing any squirrel hunting? Uh, no. We sure have a lot of squirrels here, though, don't we? Yeah, big fat squirrels. Mm -hmm. The boy didn't much care for the lunch his mother had worked so hard on. He gave most of it to the dog, then got a blazing fire going and roasted a squirrel he had killed. Whoa quite independent. After that feast and his day of mischief, the boy was tired. He walked over to the dike where he could smell the salt sea air and dream of pirate ships. He lay down in a favorite spot and was surprised to feel a trickle of water running down his back. A dike is like a big dam and holds the water back. He looked closely and was startled to find that the mighty ocean was leaking through a small hole in the dike. Even a naughty boy like Jan knew that a small leak unchecked would get bigger and that if the dike should give way, a terrible flood might drown the entire town. 
He couldn't ignore that leak. Jan knew he'd be in trouble if his mother found out that he'd never gone to Mr. Schuler's, but still he ran back to get help. He found the constable talking with the schoolmaster and shouted that the dam was leaking. But the constable just told him to go back to watching for sea monsters. And the schoolmaster said that lying boys who didn't go to church always came to bad ends. When Jan kept insisting that it was true, the constable finally sent him back to the dike and promised to bring help. But when the boy and his dog got back to the dam, there was nobody following them, and the leak had gotten worse. The hole was still small, but the flow was more than a trickle now. Jan tried to pack in a handful of dirt, but a moment later it came spurting out. He wadded up his handkerchief and tried to make a plug out of that, but of course it gave way as soon as he let go. Oh no, if he could only hold back the water for a few minutes until help came. He wrapped the handkerchief around his finger and dug it into the tiny gap in the earthen wall. The sun was going down, but for now at least, the flow had stopped. Problem, solution. How long can that be a solution for though? Storm clouds were gathering and the evening was turning cold. Jan had given up, the cons given up on the constable and the schoolmaster, but he was sure that someone would come along. He remembered the stories he'd read of faithful dogs fetching help for their wounded masters. But he was glad that his dog was still at his side. The hand that hold held back the sea was numb, but the boy hugged the dog with his free arm. Someone will come soon, he said, and think what heroes we'll be. But he wasn't sure if he believed it himself. Oh my goodness, he had to be feeling a little hopeless. The boy heard thunder as he listened to the clock in the tower striking midnight. Then he heard footsteps. The dog growled as lightning lit up a face. It was Captain Blovelt, and God only knows what wickedness that man was up to at such an hour. But he listened to the boy's story, and he ran off to get help. You mean two naughty boys are going to save the town? The captain stumbled into town, shouting for the guard. They appeared and arrested him for disorderly conduct. The constable suggested that perhaps this was the man who went around breaking glass while good people were in church. Jan's mother heard the noise and came to her window. She was angry that her son had spent the night out without permission, and she said a prayer that he wouldn't grow up to be like the man the night watchmen were leading away. Don, don, don. Then it was dawn and the storm was over. Jan was shivering and delirious when he heard the voice of the schoolmaster. Bad boy to be out worrying your mother at such an hour. Only slowly did the man realize why the boy was lying in such an awkward position. The boy himself was long past telling about it. But for a little while longer, he stayed there as the schoolmaster at last brought men with tools. In time, somebody did think to fetch Jan's mother and father. And it was they who finally wrapped a blanket around him and carried him home. But at your age, a child can survive most anything. And in a few days, Jan was up and about again. The town held a great festival to honor the young hero who had saved everybody from the worst flood since Noah. But when it was time for the banquet, the boy was nowhere to be found. Jan had sneaked off to read to Mr. Schuler and his housekeeper, and he'd even brought along a rhubarb pie. The cat in grandmother's lap was snoring now, but Peter wasn't. Come to the table now, darling, the woman asked her grandson. And when they rejoined the family, it was as if nothing wrong had ever happened. But Peter could hardly wait for dinner to be over so he could go out to keep watch at the dike himself. And that is the story of the boy who held back the sea. I hope all you treasures are staying safe this summer and being super duper good for mom and dad. Love and miss you. Bye bye.